Welcome to the deep dive. Okay, we're jumping straight into Arista Networks ANET, looking at their Q3 2025 earnings and maybe more importantly, their forward guidance. They posted some phenomenal numbers, really strong financials. But here's the puzzle. The stock initially dropped, what, 11%? Yeah, quite a dip. It settled a bit later, but still down. Exactly. So that paradoxical reaction, great results, stock falls. That's what we need to figure out today. That market response really is the core of it. Our mission then is to unpack that uh, spectacular Q3 performance, definitely. But more critically, we have to analyze those really aggressive 2026 growth targets. And look, the strategic decisions around margins, it seemed to have driven the whole narrative. The market wasn't really looking backward at Q3. They were looking ahead. OK, let's get into that scorecard then. Just looking at the core Q3 2025 non-GAAP results, I mean, this was an absolute beat, right? Easy to go question. Revenue hit $2.308 billion. That's a huge jump, 27.5% uh, year over year. And it sailed past the $2.26 billion forecast. And, you know, that strength went straight to the bottom line, too. Diluted EPS, earnings per share, came in at 75 cents. That's up 25% year over year. Easily beat the 71 cents expected. So, okay, they beat on revenue. They beat on UPS. Why the initial punishment from the street? Why sell off a company that just over-delivered? Well, the sources mentioned, you know, broader market trends, maybe some external factors. But the main thing seems to be this forward-looking anxiety. It's tied to valuation. Yeah. The stock was already pretty pricey, and crucially, future margins. Ah, okay. So it wasn't the what. It was the what's next. Exactly. You're looking at a stock trading near its historical highs. Yeah. So any hint that future profitability might dip, even for strategic growth, can trigger a sell-off. The market reacted, maybe overreacted to this idea that Arista might sacrifice some margin to really capture that AI hyperscale market. We'll get into the details of that. Right. But just pausing on their execution for a moment, financially, Arista looks like a fortress. Let's touch on those Q3 profitability metrics. A non-GAAP gross margin of 65.2%. That sounds really strong. It's incredibly strong. It tells yeah. you they have immense pricing power and differentiation right now. And look at the operating margin. Non-GAAP operating margin came in at a, like, powerhouse 48.6%. Wow. Yeah. Keeping an operating margin near 50% in this business, hardware and software, that's just elite performance. Shows incredible discipline. And that obviously flows down. Non-GAAP net income was $962.3 million, which is, what, 41.7% of revenue? Mm -hmm. And this discipline, this execution is exactly what the CEO, Jayshree Ulal, always highlights. Mm. But, and here's the catch, the market assumes this current level of amazing profitability will just continue indefinitely. And that assumption is what the future guidance sort of challenge. Okay, so the market clearly wasn't just focused on Q3. Let's shift straight to that future view, the guidance for the next couple of years, because that's where the anxiety really kicked in. For Q4 2025, the immediate quarter, revenue guidance is $2.3 billion to $2.4 billion, and non-GAAP operating margin projected between 47% and 48%, so still very strong near term. Right, very strong. Yeah. But what's interesting is how that sets up the next couple of years. Arista is really raising the bar aggressively for their long-term goals. They confirmed their full year 2025 revenue target is around $8.87 billion. That implies, you know, 26 to 27 percent year over year growth. Still huge. And it doesn't really slow down much from there, even as the numbers get bigger. For fiscal year 2026, they're targeting $10.65 billion in revenue. That's roughly 20 percent year over year growth again. It's a massive leap for a company already this size. Yeah. And look, that growth is almost entirely pinned on their intense focus on AI that whole mega trend. For this year, fiscal 2025, their AI target that includes both front-end and back-end networking is already set at over $1.5 billion. And here's the really big commitment, right? The one driving the narrative and demanding perfect execution. By FY 2026, the AI center target alone is expected to hit $2.75 billion. Right. That projected growth in just the AI segment is enormous. A 60 to 80 percent year-over-year jump. God, Passive. She said 80 percent. Wow. Yeah. And they are also, you know, strategically targeting adjacent areas, mm. campus networking specifically. The FY 2026 target there is $1.25 billion. They expect about 60% year-over-year growth there, too. So diversification, but AI is clearly the main engine. Definitely. It's important, but small compared to the cloud and AI piece. So what's the word on demand, then? Did management sound confident customers are still buying? Very confident. The commentary was strong that demand remains incredibly robust. Mm -hmm. Any variability, they say, isn't because customers aren't buying. It's the supply side again? Precisely. Any quarterly bumps, like uh, 
the slight deceleration and analysts pointed out, they say it's largely supply driven. Those long lead times on components we talked about, it's not a lack of customer appetite. Okay, that distinction is crucial, but it does introduce execution risk, doesn't it? Absolutely. But to backstop that massive growth ambition and manage those supply constraints, their balance sheet is ready. Q3 ended with cash and investments totaling $10.1 billion. $10 billion. Yeah. That's their war chest, their strategic advantage for navigating this supply chain volatility. Okay, so this huge growth, especially in AI, it demands we look at the strategy, the technical side. What are the nuts and bolts? How do they actually plan to achieve this kind of AI dominance? Well, what's interesting is Arista is really sticking to its knitting, its core identity. They provide Ethernet switches and software built around their operating system, EO's extensible operating system. Their scale comes from serving the absolute giants, right? Mm -hmm. Microsoft and Meta are their biggest customers. And something like three quarters of their sales are still in North America. Right. So how are they planning to secure this future growth, especially with rivals pushing their own proprietary AI fabrics? They seem to be betting heavily on collaboration and open standards. They talked about ESA and Ethernet for scale-up networks as an open OCP work stream. Remind us, what's OCP? OCP is the Open Compute Project. It's a really critical initiative pushing for open hardware designs, championed by, well, their biggest customers like Meta and Microsoft. Isun is about creating unified Ethernet fabrics, multi-vendor at huge scale. And Arista is also deeply involved in the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, UEC. Their stated goal is to expand UEC into these scale-up configurations as well. So this focus on open standards feels like a direct competitive strategy. They're offering an alternative to getting locked into one vendor-specific AI fabric, positioning Ethernet as the flexible choice for these massive AI clusters. Exactly. It avoids vendor lock-in. And they're not just doing networking for AI, they're also using AI for networking. They announce these AI agents. Okay, AI agents, how do those work? They're designed to streamline network operations, troubleshooting. They combine open standards, like something called MCP, huh. with the data they get from EOS and NetDL. Well, hold on, we know EOS is the operating system. What are MCP and NetDL? Uh, right, so MCP is basically their standard network control plane, the software managing traffic and protocols. NetDL is network data lake. Think of it as Arista's huge database of all the telemetry and operational data coming off the network. Got it. So these AI agents use that data lake to train models that can like predict and flag potential issues before they happen. It's a smart internal feedback loop using AI to manage the network, not just building networks for AI compute. Okay, let's tie this back to the margin drop that spooked the market. This brings us to that good, better, best idea, and specifically the blue box model. Why does the blue box model hurt their future margin outlook? Right, the blue box, that represents the good tier. It's basically state-of-the-art Arista hardware, includes their net AI capability, but crucially, it allows the customer to run an open network operating system, or NOS, or even their own custom software stack. Instead of Arista's full EOS platform. Exactly. The full EOS platform is the best offering and carries the higher margin. So they're essentially trading potentially higher software and service margins for potentially much higher hardware volume, especially with the big cloud guys. That's precisely it. And this is really critical context for you, the listener. Arista explicitly said they factored this in. The expectation of a higher mix shifting towards these huge cloud and AI customers who are more likely to use these blue box approaches, that's built into their lower FY 2026 gross margin guidance, that 62% to 64% range. So it was a deliberate strategic choice. Yes. They're willing to accept that margin pressure to solidify their position as the go-to hardware provider for the biggest players. They're betting that the volume and market share capture will drive more long-term value overall. Okay, shifting to the broader financial picture then. Qualitatively, it's hard to argue with their health, right? The balance sheet looks impeccable. We're talking a three-year revenue KGR compound annual growth rate of 33.3% operating margin consistently over 43%, a great current ratio of 3.33, and zero debt to equity. Financially, they look amazing. Absolutely stellar financials. So why are investors still nervous if the company is so solid? Because the valuation already assumes they will you know, walk on water. The nervousness really comes from combining that sky-high valuation with some significant operational risks. Let's look at those valuation concerns first. The P.E. ratio is way up there, 60.38. Price to sales, 24.66. Price to book, 17.71. Wow. Yeah, all these are trading near their five-year, maybe even 10-year historical highs. 
It suggests the market has already priced in just an extraordinary amount of future growth and absolutely flawless execution. Which leaves very little room for error. That high valuation makes them super sensitive to any market wobbles or negative news. Precisely. And the stock's high beta, 1.26, confirms that. It's significantly more volatile than the overall market. Mm. Now let's layer on that execution risk. Even though the CEO says demand is strong, that variability in shipments is real. Because, as we mentioned, those lead times on components are still stretched way out, 38 to 52 weeks. That is a huge lead time. It requires massive forward planning. And massive commitments. This forces Arista to carry elevated purchase commitments. The total. Seven billion dollars. Seven billion. Seven billion dollars. It's like they're building this huge strategic reserve of networking components, ah. betting billions that the supply bottleneck won't ease up too quickly or that demand won't falter. That's a big bet. If demand slows even slightly or a major customer pivots their architecture. That $7 billion commitment could become a major liability fast. The potential for an execution stumble is definitely real when you're dealing with supply chains this tight. And finally, there is just a minor flag but worth mentioning from the sources. Some insider selling activity. Yeah, a notable warning sign perhaps. Yeah. 11 transactions reported, significant insider selling over the past three months. Now look. Insider selling doesn't automatically mean disaster. People sell for lots of reasons. But when you combine it with these near-record valuations and the huge operational bets they're making, it just adds another layer to that cautious sentiment. It suggests maybe some insiders who know the company best are choosing to take some money off the table right now. Investors always watch that closely. So we've really circled back to that core tension, haven't we? Arista has best-in-class financials, truly enormous future targets driven by AI. Mm -hmm yet the valuation demands perfection. And their strategic choice to trade some future margin for massive volume, that blue box strategy that seems to be what really rattled the market this quarter. Precisely. And you know, the source materials frame this whole market as entering a golden era for networking. The total addressable market, the TAM, mm -hmm. potentially growing to over $100 billion as AI just reshapes everything. So here's the final thought, maybe the provocative question for you to chew on. Arista is betting the farm on open Ethernet standards, right? E-I-U-S-E. What does this open strategy sacrificing some short-term margin for market breadth, what does that actually mean for the future balance of power in these massive, multi-planar, gigawatt-scale AI data centers? Will the open approach ultimately win out against proprietary solutions? That really is the billion dollar or maybe hundred billion dollar question for the next era of infrastructure. Something to watch closely. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the Arista Network's outlook. We'll catch you next time.